What are the themes of the movie? I would say forgiveness, um, romance, revenge. Paris Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote this script a few years ago, and I think certainly um, there are elements to it that are timely, but I think amongst my friends and the people that I talk to, the, these are all themes that like, certainly women have been talking about for many, many centuries, really. Hey, I said, what are you doing? Reading it for the first time sort of made me nervous in a really good way, in the kind of way that makes me excited to be a part of something um, and really that kind of writing just doesn't come along very often so I was very excited. You know the movies that I love are kind of proper old-fashioned thrillers really this is a it's a dark comedy and a thriller and it so happens that it has a kind of female lead who is struggling with something that happened in her past but I do think it's on the face of it I hope that it's a movie that is kind of timeless. And I think the, the certainly the romantic comedy aspect to it feels like a sort of like you've got mail that's what I watched on the plane but um, you, you know it's sort of like like an amazing 90s romantic comedy in the way that yeah. doesn't really get written anymore and so I don't know there was just something about it that felt kind of really nostalgic and warm and sentimental in all the right ways and I think you don't see that very much so there is a whole part of the film that um, feels like you're in a, like a really great 90s rom-com I thought we had a connection okay how old am I what are my hobbies? What's my name? Sorry, maybe that one's too hard. Her whole life was derailed by a single event, and so we figured out what that event was together and, and then put together what her life had been like. But most of my preparation was literally just long chats with Emerald, and we um, worked together. And I think my preparation's changed a lot in the last couple of years, and I just don't have any time because I have two children who are little. So, you know, I don't have... A, and, and for this, we didn't have extended periods of time. And, and I feel increasingly more like jumping in with someone I really, really trust and with brilliant actors um, and taking risks um, sometimes. It's about sort of not feeling silly, I think. And, <laughs> and Emerald was just so brilliant at making everyone feel so comfortable. And so we just tried lots. Like, there were lots and lots and lots of different versions of things. Cassandra, <laughs> we're in class together at Forest. You would have been a great doctor. I play a former classmate of Carrie's character that comes back into her life looking um, harmless and kind, apparently. So um, yeah, it was just like, in contrast to sort of the rest of the movie, uh, my scenes got to be lighthearted and sweet. So the whole time I thought we were making a very sweet, uh, approachable movie. Um, and then I would like see the shell shocked looks on the faces of the crew when I would show up and be like, oh, I think the scenes yesterday were slightly different than this. Uh, but it was, yeah, total pleasure. Bo thought he was making a sequel to You've Got Mail. <laughs> yes. We didn't want to disabuse him a bit <laughs> of the notion. What are you going to do? I don't know. When Emerald and I met about the film, she sent me a playlist um, and Toxic was on there twice. <laughs> so it gave me a kind of indication of that, that Britney would be a big part of this film. And I think the thing is, is that you often find this with pop music or like popular culture, particularly pop culture that um, young women like, is it sort of treated ironically or it's um, treated like a guilty pleasure. But I've always loved Britney Spears and I think Toxic is one of the greatest songs ever written. And so I kind of wanted to, actually the whole movie in general, I wanted to kind of make sure that these things that we kind of think of as silly and our culture dismisses, like clothes, makeup, pop music, stuff that, you know, some women, not all women, enjoy, um, treat it seriously. I think I always hoped that I might get the opportunity to direct, but I didn't, I really didn't dream I would get to make a movie in Hollywood with, you know, people like Carrie and Bo, who were just beyond exceptional and wonderful. And so I think you kind of hope that something like that might happen, that like you might be allowed one day to, you know, direct your sister to the shops. I don't know, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was trying to think of something else that you might direct. That's the thing. <laughs> you know, you don't expect this. You don't expect to be at Sundance with these guys, you know.
Oscar nominee, Kerry Mulligan and Bo Burnham. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> and, friend. Pause. and friend. <laughs> we get accusations like this all the time. Who needs brains? They never did a girl any good. I'm so sorry I didn't go with her. You gotta let it go. I would really encourage people to watch the film because in many ways it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and a lot of tricks in a way that I think all the movies that I enjoy are and it's surprising in ways I think that people won't expect and so it's a very difficult movie to talk about theoretically and in terms of the tone I, I think the most macabre terrible things are the things that we tend to laugh at to make sense of them to make them bearable and so I don't think many things are off limits and and um, certainly you know, the worst moments in my life have always fol been followed by a fit of like terrible, helpless giggles. So it always felt like the, the right way of, you know, talking about something difficult. Carrie, I know that you've worked with a series of female directors recently. Do you feel like things are changing? And what does the Academy need to do to like catch up? I wonder if the system works in terms of getting sent 100 screeners and, um, Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to vote unless you can prove that you've seen every single one. Mm -hmm. There should be a test. Um, because the films that did, I, un, in my opinion, get um, left out are indisputably brilliant. Hustlers, Little Women, of course, um, and The Farewell. Um, but I feel like the fact that they're all getting made and they are getting celebrated in some form is progress, but it's all baby steps. I think the way that humans are is they tend to watch the, they prioritize the things that they, they're comfortable with, that they mm. like. So they will go with really, you know, established filmmakers making movies about um, subjects that they they kind of know very well. Well, if it worked more like a, like a jury on a film festival where, you know, smaller groups of people were allocated certain, I don't know, there's got to be a system where you can't just vote for your mates or the people who had the biggest advertising campaign had the most money pumped behind it. Um, not to say that that, I'm not disparaging any of the films that we're all recognised, but the, there are exceptional films that year after year go under the radar. Having said that, we welcome all and any awards. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And that goes without saying, obviously. And then finally, Emerald, you play Camilla in The Crown. Yes. What have you learned about the royal family? The thing that I feel most strongly about is how unbelievably difficult it would be to live like they do. I think it would be unbelievably hard. So I, I went into it kind of very ambivalent, not really knowing a huge amount about the royal family. And, um, and now I feel enormously sympathetic, which I really wasn't, really wasn't expecting. <laughs> <laughs>